How much would you be willing to pay for a zero day? This story and more on ThreatWire. Usually Apple security is locked down, but Apple has had to release another patch for a new zero day that was discovered. The zero day CVE 2025-43300 was discovered by an internal Apple researcher and already found to be exploited in the wild. The CVE has a CVSS score of 8.8 and involves the Image OS framework. This framework is used for image processing and reading slash writing image file formats. It affects iPads, older and newer versions of the iPhone, as well as three different versions of Mac OS. Impact, processing a malicious image file may result in memory corruption. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. Description, an out of bounds write issue was addressed with improved bounds checking. Apple is generally known for having high standards for security, but this year alone, Apple has had to release patches for seven other zero days that were being abused in production. I know many people aren't a fan of how close the Apple ecosystem is, but what are your thoughts on this situation? Let me know in the comments. According to Congress, modern issues require historical solutions. An Arizona-based congressman decided that in order to deal with cyber attacks, the U.S. should look back to how the U.S. dealt with adversaries over 200 years ago. A new bill was introduced to the House of Representatives called the Cyber Crime Mark and Reprisal Authorization Act of 2025, which would allow the U.S. to issue letters of mark and reprisal. For context, a letter of mark and reprisal in their original context allowed for non-government entities to engage in offensive actions on behalf of the government. Under Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, Congress has the authority to issue letters of mark and reprisal. During the French and Indian War, the American Revolution, and the quasi-war with France, these commissions played a central role in maritime defense. The Articles of Confederation explicitly granted Congress this power, a provision carried forward into the Constitution. Although the federal government has not issued letters of marque since the War of 1812, an unusual example occurred during World War II when a Goodyear blimp was commissioned for anti-submarine patrols off the California coast. In the case of this new ruling, the letters of mark and reprisal would allow for the executive branch to give permission to cyber companies to quote, hack back, and attack foreign bad actors that are targeting the US. In the case of the privateering license the US is considering on offering, denoted entities would be allowed to recover stolen assets, prevent future attacks, and defend critical infrastructure. This is not the first reprisal of the US attempting to allow companies to hack back. Hacking back has been coined as the, quote, worst idea in cybersecurity. Over the years, Congress has seen a slew of bills encouraging and working towards this. In 2017, a bill by the name of Active Cyber Defense Certainty Act was introduced to carve out exceptions to the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, allowing companies to take active defense. What are your thoughts on hacking back? Should this be allowed? Is it the worst idea in cybersecurity? Do you think that going through old regulations is the right way to get this done? Let me know in the comments and I'll read some of the replies in next week's episode. If you have an undisclosed mobile zero day, you may be in for a huge payout. A new player has entered the scene of zero day brokers and the purchase prices are insane. The new company, Active Security Solutions, launched this month, August 2025. According to the website, it's based out of the United Arab Emirates and has the ability to work with over 25 different governments and intelligence agencies across the world. They have some of the largest ever zero-day payouts seen, offering up to $20 million for an SMS-based zero-day that works on any mobile operating system. They're also offering $15 million for zero-click iOS and Android exploits. The thing is, is that there isn't much available regarding the origins of the company, who's running it, or where the money comes from. Just that they're buying zero days in attacks. So this may be your chance to truly cash out. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of August 25th, 2025. If you enjoyed this show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire.
If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Allie. And as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.